Anyone who has played or seen the Gen 4 DS games are probably aware of its notoriously slow HP bar, especially when it comes to our favorite pink blob, Blissey. You hit her with the super effective move and have to wait nearly a minute before her HP finally hits zero. It's not just Blissey either. Anything with a high HP stat takes forever to KO. Comparing Blissey to a Pokemon with much less HP like Shuckle, you can see it takes way longer for Blissey's HP bar to reach the same percentage, even though Blissey started first. It's clear that the HP bar speed is strongly related to the amount of damage dealt. I couldn't find anything online about the mechanics behind how this worked, so I decided to investigate the topic myself in HeartGold and SoulSilver, since they are the newest Gen 4 games. For setup, I tried to align myself with speedrunning as best as possible since it highly values frame accuracy. Melandia stood out as the best emulator since it's a valid HeartGold SoulSilver speedrun choice and also supports Wi-Fi and local wireless. You will see why this is relevant later. For screen recording, I opted to use OBS because most speedrunners use it. As it turns out, HP bar depletion speed is indeed very closely tied to the amount of damage done. Before delving into the research I've done though, I'd like to go over some of the basics of how damage animations work in Gen 4, which apply to when battle scenes are on and off. The most common way to take damage is getting hit by an attack. When a Pokemon is hit, they will flash three times, and then for a small amount of time, nothing will happen. I like to think of the time where nothing happens as dead frames. After the dead frames pass, the HP bar begins decreasing. Once the HP bar finishes depleting, the game will then wait some number of dead frames again, and then move on to the next action. This could be almost anything. To determine the correct time frame for HP change, we need to know the length of dead frame periods between visible actions. The HP bar doesn't necessarily move for every point of damage on a Pokemon with over 48 HP, so we can't directly see the start and stop points. Counting the dead frames before and after HP changes mitigates this. Disclaimer. From this point forward, all the specific frame information will be for playing Heart Gold and Soul Silver on Melon DS at 60 FPS with fast tech speed and battle animations on. Animations are always turned on during wireless battles, so it is more useful to give information with them in mind. The following formula equates HP change to the number of frames taken for a Pokemon with at least 48 HP. The first change takes one frame, and all subsequent ones take two. This applies to damage and healing. I included a comment for zero change because false wipe can do zero damage. Let's take a look at a simple example from a replay to see this in practice. Here Rotom Wash has hit Rose Raid with Ominous Wind and the damage animation is about to play. We want to figure out how much damage it took based on the number of frames elapsed. This clip demonstrates the basics of a hit. Rotom Wash uses an attack, and then Rose Raid flashes before its HP bar begins decreasing. After Rose Raid's HP stops changing, the battle moves on to clear the message box and then play its move. First, we need to find the number of dead frames between the flashes and the point when Rose Raid's HP decreases. The dead frames between actions stays consistent for both sides, so we can look at the opponent's view to figure this out. FFmpeg allows us to extract the individual frames of this recording. To find our starting point, we open up an earlier frame and navigate to when Rose Raid begins flashing. Then we advance frames until we reach the point where Rose Raid's HP is just about to decrease. For simplicity, I include the second and third flashes with the dead frames, so the total count would be as follows, as we started on frame 101 and ended on frame 147. We add 1 to account for the frame that we're currently on, which makes for 47 total dead frames. Let's take a moment to look at how Rose Raid's HP is decreasing. The first HP lost only takes 1 frame, as shown by 260 HP only appearing on frame 148. The second one takes 2 frames to decrease. 259 HP appeared on frames 149 and 150. This pattern will continue on until health stops depleting. HP has stopped decreasing when it stays the same for over 2 frames. The second frame on the ending HP is the last frame that counts. In our example, this is frame 304. We started on frame 148 and ended on frame 304, which totals 157 frames. Reversing the formula, we calculate that Rose Raid lost 79 HP. Now we need to count the dead frames before the next action. This is when the text box becomes blank, so we count from frame 305 until the frame right before this happens, which is frame 332. 
To find Rosemary's HP from the original perspective, all we need to do is count 47 frames forward from the first flash animation and 28 frames back from the last point before the text box goes blank. Using the start and stop points, we again calculate 79 HP, verifying that the method works. Let's try this on Rose Raid's energy ball for good measure. Looking at the overview video, it seems that this attack is also padded by the same start and stop effects. When frame counting from the opponent's perspective, we get 46 dead frames after flashing. I'll get back to it in a bit, but this discrepancy is not too important and we can treat it like 47 frames. From the ending, we get 30 dead frames before the blank text box instead of 28 like before. The extra 2 frames likely come from this preceding both the upkeep and turn end scenes, since the next turn begins immediately after this move. If you haven't heard of upkeep before, it's a transition between attacks and effects like leftovers and sandstorm. Going 47 frames forward from Rotom Wash flashing and 30 frames backward from the point before the blank text box, we get the following start and end. Thus, HP depletion took 167 total frames, or 84 HP, which we can see is correct. The one frame discrepancy occasionally happens on the side where HP is changing, but it doesn't matter since the first HP value will then take 2 frames instead of 1 to decrease, which evens out. From what I have seen, this does not happen on the opposing side's view. Some observant viewers may have noticed that it's possible to skip counting dead frames before HP changes when a Pokemon is at full health, because only max HP has 48 pixels. This is a useful shortcut that I often use for sanity checking frame counts. We might expect this also works for fainting, since only 0 HP should have 0 pixels. Unfortunately this isn't true because Gen 4 has some quirks with the HP bar at low health. In fact, fainting is a huge pain because its dead frames depend on a multitude of factors, with one of the biggest ones being Pokemon species. Low HP bar quirks stem from Gen 4 not displaying any HP as 1 over 48 pixels. Values associated with 1 over 48 will either show as 0 or 2 pixels, depending on the scenario. They will show as 2 pixels in most cases, which is why there's no pixel difference between 1 and 21 HP on Blissey after healing. 1 over 48 values only show 0 pixels if the Pokemon is fainting. There is a slight modification for a Pokemon which faints when starting at 1 over 48 in which the initial value has 2 pixels and all lower ones have 0. You can see this in effect on an example Orenberry Blissey fainting. Before going into a harder example, I'd like to show some common events and their associated dead frame counts. All of these are constants and apply to both sides. From what I've seen, combining some of the basic ones can give frame counts for more complex events. This is why type effectiveness messages take 38 frames. They're a combination of the move n and text entry events. On to the harder example. Here we have a clip of Quagsire using Seismic Toss on a Cloister below full health. The goal is to find the net damage done to Cloister after leftovers. Quagsire's silent life orb recoil complicates the process, but Seismic Toss's constant damage will make things a bit easier to check. Cloyster has 39 damage flash frames before losing HP since Seismic Toss is a set damage move. After its HP decreases, we get Quagsire's Life Orb damage. This is typically a difficult transition to track as there's no visible queue between Cloyster's stopping point and Quagsire's starting point. Each side only has half the information needed to count the dead frames. Luckily, we know Seismic Toss does 100 damage based on Quagsire's level, so we can use that information to find when Cloyster's HP stops moving. Using set damage moves is a useful strategy in general for determining new dead frame counts. From this, we find that Life Orb has 29 dead frames. This is likely a combination of 28 frames from the move ending and 1 frame for HP changing. The discrepancy shows 28, but again notice that the first HP then takes 2 frames to decrease. All that remains now is leftovers. This one is particularly easy because the timings for item usage and healing text are consistent. Plugging in their constants, we get 29 frames or 15 HP for leftovers to heal, resulting in a net loss of 85 HP. Let's watch the battle from Cloyster's perspective to see how we did it. It starts at 237 HP, and then goes to 137 HP after getting hit by Seismic Toss. Then, after healing with leftovers, it reaches 152 HP, so our analysis checks out.
Before moving on to doubles, I want to point out that dead frame counts in NPC battles generally differ from those in wireless battles. In this battle factory fight, Gramble has 35 flashing frames instead of the usual 47, and there are only 22 dead frames after its HP stops decreasing. This caused many headaches early on, because I initially tested against wild Pokemon. Doubles has one main difference. The player's HP values aren't visible in replays, but you can still view them when battling someone by pressing the start button. That being said, spread moves also feel a bit different, so we'll cover them as well. Spread moves are a generalization of normal moves and singles. The move animation plays and Pokemon are hit sequentially. If all the hits are normally effective and don't crit, you get the same issues that you would with Life Orb except at a larger scale. We'll go over an example with visual separation between events for the sake of demonstration. After Tentacruel uses Surf, there are three different responses. Abomasnow gets a critical hit, Vaporeon heals with Water Absorb, and Fortress takes regular damage to reach under half health, triggering its Citrus Berry. All these lead to different padding dead frames around their health changes. As usual, Abomasnow has 47 damage flash frames. Afterwards, there are 12 dead frames before the critical hit message appears, which is much faster than the 38 dead frames for a type effectiveness message. Vaporeon has 38 dead frames from when the text goes blank before its HP begins increasing and 10 dead frames after since it's a healing message. We could have also found the end using the full HP shortcut. For Fortress, we'll focus on the transition between it taking damage and activating its Citrus Berry since everything else would be a repeat. The beginning queue of an item animation is probably not where you think it is. Before the sprite warps, it actually darkens slightly, so we use that to count 27 dead frames between the two events. Oftentimes, it's hard to get precise dead frame counts, especially when they aren't consistent. If you don't care about exact damage and only want to know the opponent's max HP, you can disregard dead frames by watching just the HP bar instead. To see how it works, let's return to a familiar example of Rotom Wash taking an energy ball, and count how many frames it takes for Rotom Wash to go from 47 pixels to 46 pixels. This count tells us how much HP is depleted when going from the maximum value of 47 pixels to the max of 46. In our case, it's 5 HP. We can use this to show that Rotom Wash cannot have maxed HP EVs and IVs. For 304 max HP, all values above 297 get associated with 47 pixels. However, 303 minus 5 is still above 297, so a Rotom Wash with max HP stats wouldn't be at 46 pixels by this point. In order to identify its true HP value, we would need to track all initial max HP values and eliminate impossible values over subsequent pixel changes until there is only one remaining. For Rotom Wash, this first drop eliminates 47 of the 95 possible max HPs at level 100. Doing this by hand would be slow and tedious, so naturally, I made a Python script to help me out. Check the description for a link to the gist. It's a bit crude, but it gets the job done and has the Rotom Wash example included. Before you completely give up counting dead frames, I'd like to note that partial information is still useful. For example, knowing the dead frames before HP changes gives us a lower bound on the amount of HP for a given pixel, which we wouldn't know otherwise. If you need to know the exact damage dealt, you can try creating a replica battle. By performing the same actions with the same Pokemon in a battle under your control, you can figure out the dead frames between health changes. I will note that I've had some dead frame counts be off by a bit, but it's a generally useful technique. When I first mentioned the HP speed formula, I included the caveat that the target Pokemon needed to have at least 48 HP. For Pokemon with 48 or less HP, the HP bar takes 1 frame to move the first time and 2 for every subsequent decrease, meaning that it decreases faster than a Pokemon's health for anything below 48 HP. The disconnect between the HP bar and Pokemon's health hides the amount of damage a Pokemon takes and invalidates the shortcuts previously mentioned. The only interesting thing is that Pokemon will always show the largest HP bar possible for their final HP. All moves that cause the user to immediately faint cause the HP bar to immediately reach zero, in contrast to the normal depletion sequence. The most notable example would be Explosion and its variant Self-Destruct. Here you can see it only takes one frame for HP to drop. The other two moves are Memento and Healing Wish, including its variant Lunar Dance. You can see that the HP bar acts similar to using Explosion for both moves, dropping immediately after the move starts. Substitute Partially Hides Change 
While the process of creating a substitute has visible depletion, the damage it takes is unfortunately not trackable. Substitute always takes the same time to absorb a hit or fade, regardless of how much damage it was dealt. It takes 148 frames for full health substitutes to fade for both Gengar and Rotom, despite them having different max HPs. Some of you may have been thinking about one-hit KO moves, Parish Song, and Destiny Bond as additional possible exceptions after hearing about Explosion, as they all cause affected targets to immediately faint. Despite having similar effects, all of them deplete the HP bar normally. I'm guessing you may still be curious about Platinum, so I checked it out on Mel and DS. The HP bar mechanics were the same, as well as the dead frames for item usage and move hits. There may be some differences, but I couldn't find any. If you would like to verify the statements I made or get a feel for how this works yourself, consider downloading the battle replays I have shown throughout the video. You will need to set a custom DNS to point to the IP listed on screen and get them at the global terminal. I have a spreadsheet showcasing more of the work I have done as well. Beware of inconsistent recordings before starting. Due to the level of precision involved in frame counting, it's easy to be off by one or two frames. If you have issues of this nature, please try re-recording, especially if the game text does not advance one letter per frame. With the power of Wi-Fi, this method of frame counting can be used on battles from other emulators or even real consoles. All you need to do is upload a VS Recorder video and then download it with Melon DS. I hope this video gives you a better idea of how useful the Gen 4 HP bar is and how you can exploit it to your own benefit. The next time you see a Blissey fanning, pull out OBS and a photo viewer so that you can start frame counting.